Dear students, in this module I will continue to talk about the Chow Fassman. We have already finalized the alpha helices if the propensity for alpha helices for five contiguous amino acids was greater than the propensity for formation of a beta sheet. So once we have finalized the alpha helices, that is out of our way and the remaining amino acids can now be evaluated for the tendency to form a specific secondary structure such as a beta sheet or a loop. Towards that, we can evaluate such regions step by step. So as the next step in the chow fassman algorithm, you evaluate these amino acid regions for formation of a beta sheet. So to start, you continue to scan your sequence to identify the regions where three out of five amino acids, they have a propensity for formation of a beta sheet over one. So you start and you seed a beta sheet like that. So I will mention it again. You start the formation of a beta sheet if you find three out of five contiguous amino acids which have a propensity for formation of a beta sheet to be greater than 1. Next, you declare that as a beta sheet and now you want to expand this beta sheet. So you can extend the beta sheet as you did with the alpha helix to both ends, to upstream and downstream of the sequence as well. So you extend the beta sheet to both sides until you find 4 contiguous residues with an average propensity for formation of a beta sheet to be less than 1. If you find such 4 amino acids with a propensity that has fallen below 1 towards formation of a beta sheet, then you can stop forming beta sheet out of those amino acid residues. Next, that is the end of your beta sheet and those regions they are finalized as beta sheets which have an average propensity for formation of a beta sheet to be greater than 1. So from those regions where you have declared the beta sheets, you calculate the average propensity for all of those amino acids for formation of a beta sheet and if the overall propensity comes out to be more than 1.05, then you finalize those regions as beta sheets. More so, the second condition for that is that this propensity should be greater than the propensity of those amino acids to make an alpha helix. So these are two necessary conditions to finalize a beta sheet. But there can be a case where this condition is not true. So the second condition needs to be evaluated again. So regions where you have overlapping alpha helices and beta sheets, for those regions, you need to compare their overall propensities. So if the average propensity for all of those amino acids for forming an alpha helix is greater than the average propensity for all of those amino acids to form a beta sheet, then an alpha helix is finalized. However, if the reverse case is true, that is the average propensity of those amino acids to make a beta sheet is greater than their propensity to form an alpha helix, then a beta sheet is finalized. These two points are very important towards finalizing the beta sheets. So using the strategy of higher propensity for alpha helices and beta sheets and the average propensity towards finalizing them, you can classify major portions in your sequence into the secondary structures which they can form. And next is that what about loops and turns? Besides alpha helices and beta sheets, there are loops and turns as well and you need to predict them properly too.